We need to talk a little bit about the Florida Consent, consent Decree. Um, you do have a quiz to complete on this. I just wanted to go over a quick overview. The Consent Decree gives us the details for placement of students in the ESOL program, and it also tells us how students are exited from the program, and also it speaks to the monitoring of students who have already been exited out of the program. And it's up to our Department of Education to monitor our school districts and make sure that they are all in compliance. The Department of Education analyzes data regarding the progress of students. Um, that includes their dropout rates, their GPAs, their assessment scores. And we want to talk a little bit about how they are placed. And this is going to be on your quiz. I wanted to be sure that I hit on this. Students are given a home language survey when they enroll in a school. And if they answer yes to any one of the questions on that home language survey, then they must be tested to see if they qualify for an ESOL program. The state tests reading abilities every year, but the district only allows 20 days before students are tested. And when students are placed in an ESOL program here in Florida, they have a limited English proficiency student plan. Um, one of the things also that we're going to talk about and stress today is that when we are teaching these students, we want to teach them English in a way that is equal and comparable in amount, scope, sequence, and quality to what we are teaching our English proficient students and that's going to be important to remember. Um, also, if you are in a school and you have 15 students that speak a certain foreign language, that school is immediately entitled to get a paraprofessional that also speaks that language. For example, if you have 15 students in your school that are from Haiti and they speak French, then you get a paraprofessional that speaks French. Um, I'm going to make available to all of you a colored scan of my consent decree summary because I went through and highlighted some of the important points and I think that might help some of you. Let me just go over a, a few key points um, here. In section one, it talks about being sure that the students are placed correctly, um, knowing when they're ready for exit and knowing that they're monitored. The next section just stresses that they have equal access to all appropriate English language instruction. And that's where I was mentioning in scope, sequence, and quality comparable to that what you are giving your English proficient students. The third section again stresses equality, that these students have equal access to special programs and that might be early childhood education, it might be some kind of vocational training at the high school levels, but it is offered to all of the students without regard to their level of English proficiency. Section 4 of the consent decree talks about the personnel and that is why you are all taking this class. Um, you can get it through a university or you may obtain your training in the county in which you are teaching as an in-service training. And when you obtain your certificate, you will have this little line right here that says English for Speakers of Other Languages. That is your ESOL endorsement. I know it's a lot of hard work for that one little bitty line there on your certificate. Section 5 of the Consent Decree uh, talks about the monitoring of the school districts and again that is done by the Florida Department of Education. It is the Office of Multicultural Student Language Education that is responsible for monitoring that. They do monitor um, the outcome measures. The Department of Education keeps track of the ESOL program's effectiveness and they do that by comparing dropout rates, grade point averages, and state assessment scores.